Higher Education in the Post-Pandemic World by Tom Worthington. In early February 2020, I attended a meeting at the Australian National University where we were asked if we could quickly switch to teaching online. Some of our students and staff were overseas so unable to return to campus. The Vice-Chancellor announced first a pause, then a wholesale shift to online teaching and working from the 26th of March. The Australian National University already had a well-supported suite of online learning tools, based around the Moodle Learning Management System. As my teaching was already using Moodle, I was able to continue to deliver documents, videos, and assessment tasks to students. Moodle was also used to provide students with quizzes and text-based asynchronous forums to aid their learning. A paper I presented last year at the IEEE Learning for Engineering conference describes this blended flipped approach, with integrated assessment. The only change needed was to replace face-to-face -face workshops with Zoom-based video conferences, while maintaining the same content and assessment. The computer science students were already using online project management and group communication tools, such as GitHub and Slack, for working in teams on group projects. These proved very effective for maintaining group contact with team members spread around the world. One possible future for higher education is Online Plus. There can still be campuses with classrooms, but with flexible flat floor rooms, like those in the Australian National University's Marie Ray Teaching Centre. With lectures replaced by recorded videos, teachers can spend more of their time with students, working on practical projects. Courses can be designed for online delivery in asynchronous mode, plus activities in a classroom, linked online via a video conference. With this approach, students can decide when they need to be on campus, which is likely to be only about 20% the time. However, this approach requires teaching staff who have training in the use of technology for distance education. A recent report to the Council of Australian Governments recommended allowing students to blend vocational and university education. COVID-19 has forced much of secondary and higher education online. This provides the opportunity to consider how to integrate these better and provide more flexibility. Australian secondary education can be blended into the vocational education system and that into university. International vehicle manufacturers use the One Engineering platform to produce many models of cars for customers around the world. This approach can be used by universities to provide internationally standardized qualifications. These can be nested to allow from a three-week micro-credential to a multi-year doctorate. Students can choose campus, online, or work integrated learning options. An example of the platform approach is the International Professional Practice Partnership IP3, under the sole accord for certifying computer professionals. The Australian Computer Society certifies computer professionals under the Scheme for Australia. This provides a level of international standardisation of the skills and knowledge required in professions, and a guide to university curricula. Universities are not required to teach in the same way, as long as graduates have the required attributes. Like a car maker's platform, such global agreements take many years to produce but once agreed, they increase the quality and reliability of global education. Classroom activities that require student interaction and group work were easily able to transition from face-to-face -to, -face to online mode in 2020. Examples of high interaction student group activities at the Australian National University are the Tech Launcher Computer Science Projects, Innovation ACT Entrepreneurial Competitions, and Hackathons. An example is the Fighting Pandemics Virtual Hackathon, run in August by the University's Humanitarian Innovation Society, with the Clinton Global Initiative University and IBM. The transition from the classroom to online was made possible by delivering synchronous learning embedded in an asynchronous matrix. This form of flipped learning uses a text message system, such as Slack, before, during, and after video conference sessions, using a platform such as Zoom. Students are given a series of challenges, each with a deadline. The deadlines are used to synchronize the asynchronous communication. Post-COVID-19, Australian universities will need to continue to offer online learning. 
The Chinese government is now promoting online education as a result of COVID-19. International tensions may limit future international student travel, without warning, just as COVID-19 did, forcing students online again. In addition, China's Education Action Plan for the Belt and Road Program offers assistance to students in our region to study at Chinese-built universities in their own country, or in China. For most students, a campus experience will remain attractive, but only for a small part of their study. Australian universities need to offer an online option to both domestic and international students if they wish to remain viable. For a list of references, please search for Higher Education in the Post-Pandemic World at the highereducationwhisperer.com.